Today this is going to be the Metal Earth Premium Series Icon X and this is the P51D Mustang um, but it's also actually known as the Tuskegee Airmen um, plane and so if we're going to read here um, the Tuske Tuskegee Airmen were trained at the Tuskegee, Tuskegee Air oh, okay sorry this is actually really hard to say so as it says here, Tuskegee Airmen were trained at the Tuskegee Army Airfield in Alabama. During World War II, they flew more than 15,000 individual sorties in Europe and North Africa where they gained recognition as the Red Tails for the uniquely painted red tails of their planes. As you can see, there's the red uh, tail there. So we're going to open this up real quick. And this is a two sheet model, uh, so it's not too complicated. And as you can see, it has a very nice matte finish. Uh, so there's two sheets and then there's going to be the instructional manuals. And I believe there are two instructional manuals here. For the second sheet and the first sheet. And we are going to start now from manual. You're going to see the sheet number and then the part number, which is actually nice. And then you're going to see the E for the engraved or the color side and then NE typically if they want you to know specifically that that's going to be the non-engraved or the silver side. So as you can see here, there's either going to be an engraving in here, but no color or it's going to be colored. Now the opposite side, uh, this is the part where it's kind of tricky because you will see some engravings, but that's actually not what they consider the engraved side. These are just little scores that they put in to help bend the sheet metal a little bit more evenly. But in, for the most part, this is all going to be your exposed sized here. And another thing to uh, describe is that you're going to see two different uh, symbols a lot, which is the purple circle and then the green, not purple, sorry, the blue circle and the green triangle. And so the night, the uh, blue circle is when you're bending the tab 90 degrees, while this triangle is meant for when you're twisting the tab to uh, keep the piece together. So how this works is I'm gonna be looking for A1, which is going to be this gigantic piece here. Now, if you look very carefully, you're gonna see that there's a hole in between where the tab's connected, and it's perfect for these kind of small wire snippers to go in between and just snip. And it doesn't take a lot of force to snip it, so don't try to like force your uh, your wire snipper in, um, down. You just have to do a slight snip like that. And this will go around. So I'm gonna use my dapping tool here because I think this can be the right shape. Start slowly bending it. Now I'm going to be using this tool to start my curvature. I'm going to only do it slightly because it's actually not a straight circle but it's more of a cone shape. Hey guys, just to let you know, starting from this point on in the video, you're going to hear my voice sound different and the reason for that is I'm actually recording the audio uh, post-production or actually um, during the editing process and the reason for that is just I realized that I just stopped talking after this point. There's like one or two areas where I do chime in a little bit but other than that, for the most part, I just realized I was just too focused and just totally forgot to make any commentaries. I also do want to comment that if you're following along uh, with this build, uh, please be sure to make sure that uh, you're working on the P51D Mustang Tuskegee Airmen version. There are actually two different versions. There is the P51D Mustang uh, Tuskegee Airmen, and the other one is a sweet Arlene model. This one also has the name Arlene on it, but it's actually the Duchess Arlene if you look at the side of the hole. Um, and the, there's not many differences, but the, one, the two key areas, actually there's three uh, big changes between the two models. Uh, the first one is the kind of the uh, front of the hole that you just saw right now. Uh, instead of being that one singular piece, it's actually two separate pieces that you're going to be putting together. 
before you attach the propellers. Um, the second change to the model is that the, the Sweet Arlene model actually has the, the, bomb, the bombs that are attached to the side of the wings. And then the third change is actually just the way the base looks. Other than that, the model build and everything are pretty much identical. It's just that those are the three key areas that are different. So if you're following along and something doesn't look right, uh, it might be that you're actually working on the Sweet Arlene model instead of the Tuskegee Airmen model. For these kind of bends, I actually like using this tool here because it's actually flat. Uh, so when I put it up against here and I can actually rotate 90 degrees and once it stops, because this is kind of a 90 degree, it'll actually stop exactly at the 90 degree bend, which is actually a lot easier to do because you know exactly when to stop so you're not over bending the piece. In case they want us to bend down and under. Get as close as possible to the, the sheet and then bend the tab. If you don't put it right up against the sheet when you're twisting the tab, it'll actually be slightly loose and then you're gonna start having the piece jiggle around which you do not want to do. part is actually kind of tricky to do. It took me a few tries, but what I ended up doing was actually pulling it from the other side. So once I kind of placed it in uh, using like a freezer, actually I used uh, my plier because it was thin enough. Um, once I kind of got it in place, I would go from the other side and pull it in through the hole and make sure that the, the two tabs are uh, through the hole when I'm aligning it. Uh, it's a little bit tricky and I think the one advice I would have is instead of closing that front uh, portion of the hole early on, you can actually leave it open so you can kind of widen the, the shape of the uh, airplane just so that you can fit in the piece nicely and then uh, make your conal shape for the front of the hole afterwards. When installing the front of the cockpit, what I ended up doing was actually putting in the middle one first and then kind of widening the piece and then uh, once I'm over the two holes on the sides, I kind of uh, crimp it in with my fingers and then get my plier and uh, kind of twist it in place. All I'm doing right now is just making some minor adjustments because I thought it looked a little narrow for the airplane itself. Um, and you can use the picture that's on the front of the cover to kind of use as a guide for how wide this airplane has to be. So for the rest of the cockpit uh, frame, this one was actually really tricky because the shape of the, of the cockpit frame is actually a little bit longer than um, the actual piece that I'm supposed to attach it to. So. Um, it took me a, a while, but what I ended up doing was just making sure that I got all the tabs in in place, and then I started using adapting tool to just kind of warp the metal sh the metal pieces until it kind of became a nice uh, curvature shape. For the control wheel, um, the best way to do it is actually to rotate along the same plane as the, the sheet 
um, for just the, the handle until you're kind of where the triangle meets kind of at a point perpendicular to or to a tangent to the straight edge and then you're going to bend it up 90 degrees. Um, the hard part about this is that the shape for the control board, um, it actually isn't a great fit when I realized because when I tried to have the height of it be kind of what it needs to be, you I actually have the the control uh, wheel I guess um, be right in front of the face of the, the, the seat and so if you try to press it down it gets too wide where it won't actually fit inside the, sh the, the airplane afterwards so it is a little bit tricky so you might have to kind of you know bend it and kind of form it as you go along because the, the first shape that you get will probably not be perfect. So the best way to attach the cockpit to the, the airplane uh, hull is I just started on one side and put in the two tabs and then I just kind of uh, wedged it in until I saw the two other uh, the, the two tabs on the other side kind of just fit into the hole and drop in. And then um, I used my plier to just kind of uh, crimp the edges afterwards. It's kind of hard to see in the manual but the edge of the, the wings here, the, the tailwind the wings there. So the tail wing, when you fold it in half, it's not supposed to be exactly flat. It does have a little bit of a curvature and a little bit of volume to it. Um, and then at the end, you're actually going to have this kind of tab that you're just going to bend over to keep it in place. It's different from the other tabs that you're used to where you're putting it through a hole and you're either going to bend it 90 degrees or uh, twisting it. You're actually going to just kind of wrap it around to keep it in place. So this part is a little bit tricky, but just make sure that your tabs are sticking directly up um, and kind of widen away because uh, as you're trying to uh, shape the tail hole, uh, what ends up happening is that the tab will want to kind of bend inwards and for that reason it might be too narrow that you, you would probably want to have the, uh, the tabs be a little bit straighter when you're putting it in. When you're attaching the wings to the body of the plane, just start with one corner of the tab and then just start uh, fitting it in one by one. You may have to kind of bend the wings a little bit more into a curvature shape to make sure that it, uh, all the holes fit nicely.
as you're pushing these pieces out for the wings as you see here like the the two triangular pieces as you're pushing it down it starts to tend to warp a little bit or kind of bend in more than one uh, area so um what i did was actually just use my finger and press it closer to where the uh, the the edge is meeting the rest of the the plane and then pushing it down there and then i actually used a ply and went back and it kind of straightened where it was kind of over bent The tires are pretty straightforward. Um, it's the same concept as a lot of the other tires for the Metal Earth models. Um, you get the strip and you're just going to kind of make it into a, a circle and then close the tab uh, like so. And then you're just going to put the front plate of the tire. You're actually not going to put the back plate on the tire till later because the back plate is actually going to be attached to um, the actual um, the stem or actually I don't know what to call it but like the, the leg of the wheel. And then you're gonna uh, attach this kind of front piece wheel onto it afterwards. So there's a piece you need to watch out for. Uh, there's a middle piece that you actually have to bend down in kind of like a curvature shape. Uh, make sure that your, the, the two sides of the wheel uh, leg is actually wide enough so they can fit through. And then you can also have this kind of side piece to go down and um, you can actually fit it through and close off nicely. When you're attaching the bottom of the wing to the, the top body of the airplane, um, not all the tabs are actually going to go into a hole. Uh, so you're going to see a few uh, tabs sticking out. Don't worry, you did not actually miss uh, align it and not put it through. Uh, you didn't put it through a hole. Um, that those other ones that are kind of left over are going to be the ones that are going to be wrapping around uh, the wing. Um, the one I do want to caution is on the kind of back side of the wing, right where the the, um, the flapper is, um, you have to stick the hole through there and it's kind of hard to reach a little bit. So you want to make sure that um, you might want to actually bend up that flapper a little bit to kind of uh, reveal the hole a little bit more as you're trying to fit the tab in through and then you can kind of bend the piece back down after you're done. The manual shows to actually bend it into a U shape first, but I actually like using uh, I, I actually like doing the curvature part first because I can actually use a rod and kind of just wrap it around while I can actually uh, have this side be exposed and kind of access it easier. But once you bend it, it's kind of hard to make the curvature shape uh, by hand. Um, that you would probably want to make the curvature shape first and then bend it 90 degrees and then make the U shape for the legs afterwards. The engraved side is actually going to point down in this one because it's going to be an inverted box so you're going to actually make it into like a uh, you're actually going to close the box in onto the wheel because that is actually going to drop in from the the top and uh, you're going to actually have it be kind of a recessed uh, wheel look. I don't know why the manual does it sometimes, but they show you a part that's really hard to see. So in this case, 
you're actually going to have to bend these two uh, parts down to keep the belly from kind of uh, sticking out more than it needs to. So it kind of holds it in place. This one's a little bit tricky to put in because you have uh, two different directions that the tabs are going in. So uh, this, my suggestion is actually putting in the side tabs in first. So you might have to actually widen the, the belly of the airplane a little bit so that the tabs can fit in. And then once that's in place, you can actually drop down the other two holes into the tab, um, which will be a lot easier than doing it the opposite direction. The propellers are a little bit tricky, but what you need to do is for each propeller, you're going to actually just bend it in half um, and you're going to have four propellers total. Um, but afterwards, this is the part where it gets a little bit weird is that um, you have to make a cone shape from that Pac-Man kind of shape piece. Um, and it's kind of hard to shape it because the, the propellers kind of get in the way. So you might be warping the propellers a little bit. Uh, careful not to over warp the propellers as you're working on it because uh, it is kind of at a weak spot that it could break off potentially. The base is relatively straightforward, but my little advice for this one would be to bend down the front and the back side of the base first um, because that's where the tab is. Because once you do that, then when you bend down the side, it should just fit straight in through the uh, tabs. And um, I actually not did I did not do that this way, um, so it was actually a little more time consuming because I just did two sides first. Um, so that kind of was a little bit of a pain, so you could avoid that by just actually having the front and the, the back side down first. And once we put the propellers on, we are actually done with this model. Um, I have to say, I actually really did enjoy making this Tuskegee Airmen model. It was challenging, but not too difficult. Uh, the only difficulties were probably some of the hard to reach uh, areas. Kind of like the side engine um, that you saw earlier was like probably the hardest thing that I had to do on this model. But overall, I just really like the, the kind of matte finish and I just love the detail of this. And, uh, you know, like, I would actually really highly suggest doing this if you're looking for a challenge. And, you know, it's a great piece to have as decoration in your house once you're done. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed watching this video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button below.